fundamentals of tackling are probably a bit different for everyone. The inside ball, another good time tackle for Harris. Tackle for good time from for Underhill. But it's probably a timing thing for me, a repetition thing, like getting used to the actual body position you need to be in and getting good at getting low, late. And Swinson's just about to find out, it's Underhill and Bruno Polo. There's no missed tackle there. A sort of a willingness, I guess, to be physical and to not worry too much about the consequences of that either, either side, I guess. To Mitchell, Mitchell gets absolutely hammered there. He is the biggest hitter in the English game. And he doesn't like that when Underhill stops him. The run for the line for Williams! Textbook tackling from England. So for me, boys, it's a big week. I don't need me to tell you that. The way that you make it a special week is by the way we trade today. I mean that with everyone in the circle. Trust me, lads, that the extra work that you do on the field, the early work that you're going to do, the extra work that we're going to do off the field, in terms of transferring what we speak about upstairs, <coughs> transferring what we speak about in meetings, onto the field, is going to be worth it, boys. So make sure you keep, keep doing that, keep doing your work off the field, and keep doing your work on the field. Tomorrow's a big session, boys. So this week we started with a sort of learning day on Monday, so getting to grips with our calls for the week, uh, play sheets, set piece strikes, and getting a bit of a feel for a preview of how we think New Zealand will play. Uh, and then Tuesday, sort of our big day for training. So more physical as a day, as a training session. So uh, set piece units will maul and scrum and do a fair bit of sort of contact work. And the team session, the content and team session will be a bit longer and a bit more competitive. Uh, Wednesday's our down day. So today we're sort of relaxing, uh, going for coffees, doing whatever, making sure we recover. Thursday will be a quick day, so we'll get running again, but slightly less physical. And then Friday is a team run day, so we'll just make sure we've got absolute clarity on everything we need from a tactical, technical, and sort of mental point of view. In your own time, one shoulder in the shoulder. Yes, one, two. Roll, roll, roll. I don't know, I think with most things with rugby, the, and maybe sport in general, the things you do the best are the things you don't really think about because you've done them so many times in training. So, you know, when you pass the ball, you're not thinking about specifically what you're doing. You just know that you have to pass the ball and you've practiced that so many times that it's sort of a natural movement. I think tackling is probably the same thing. We do a lot of, a lot of training to make it, A, to make it effective, B, to make it safe for yourself and the other player. But yeah, there's, there's always going to be that element of physicality. I think what makes you know, consistently good tackles is predominantly technique, I'd say, and technique comes from training. So yeah, like some people will naturally be better at it than others. Some people are you know, shorter, taller, more powerful, less powerful, whatever the, the sort of physical characteristics of that person might be will affect how they do it. But from a, a generic point of view, I'd say, yeah, I'd say, I'd say timing and, and technique and that, that predominantly comes from training. K-pop slammed in the tackle. Big shot from Underhill. Trademark Underhill, he's won the ball back for his team. I'd say like a willingness to help the team is probably the thing that brings physicality or allows it to happen. I think everyone's different and motivated differently, but I think a lot of people will be motivated by essentially helping their teammates and not wanting to let them down. And again, you, you gain an understanding of what you need to do, either from past games or from your training week. You know by the weekend what you have to do. Uh, I think the, the, the difference between whether that's a success or not is obviously doing it. That comes down to the sort of the motivation behind it and your drive to do it consistently, especially, I guess, under fatigue and, and under stress. We've been lucky enough today down in Otago Rugby at the Zingri Richmond Club to host the English players and management. It's been absolutely awesome to have the English players and management here and what a welcoming bunch they were and just us answered all the questions brilliantly. I uh, just wanted to thank the English team. We don't often get this access to the English team, sorry not the English team but any international team so for them to give up their time the day before a test match, muchly appreciated. So um, I suppose there's a lot of people here who come along today to meet you guys and a lot of the volunteers. Um, what I'd be really cool to hear from a few of you guys is, is there someone from when you were a kid who stands out as a volunteer in a club? Like we've got these people who, they've got 30, 40 years into the clubs. 
So there's someone that steps out, some of you guys that you look, when you think back to your child at the club, there's an identity there that you think of. Um, his name is Harry Harrison. So it's more from a holistic point of view, but um, so my parents, they, they couldn't drive me, they couldn't take me there uh, to, to training and stuff. And he used to pick me up, take me to training. Um, you know, if I needed anything, if I needed any help, um, he would be there to, to help me. Um, he actually lives in Exeter now and supports Exeter, so it's a bit difficult. <laughs> he always asks me for tickets and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but no, he was, um, he was incredible for me. And he didn't have to do it. Um, you know, he, he got, um, you know, nothing out of it, but um, thankfully for his, for his stuff that he did with me when I was younger and, and the help that he gave me. Um, there was a lot of people that helped me, but he, he sticks out um, quite a bit, so that was incredible. That was incredible. Um, thanks, thanks to the quad squad for doing this. Um, I've been around for a little while, and, and I know that you've got a busy agenda, you've got a lot of things um, prepared for for tomorrow, and not a lot of the visiting teams would go out of their way to do something like this, so, so really thank you very much from, from everybody here, and look, all the best for us all of tomorrow. Go about tomorrow. And thanks again for, for taking some time just to chew the fat with, with some very passionate community rugby people. So now thanks again. My relationship with Slides began a while ago. I'm trying to think now, probably. 15 or 16 years of age, would have met him for the first time at one of the Northampton Academy sessions. We were both at, at different schools, but uh, I remember meeting him and a, a few of the other boys at one of those sessions for the first time, and uh, a few boys said to me, oh, his, you know, his dad was, dad was a great player as well. So I, uh, I sort of tried to keep an eye on him and see how he was doing, and then yeah, we just played in the academy together for a, a number of years while we were at school, and then uh, luckily both got contracts at at Northampton and yeah I've just sort of grown grown close and close to him since since that that first time when we were 15 or 16. I think I think debuting away from home or you know being involved in a first tour is probably because of the nature of it you probably get a bit closer a bit quicker with the, the players that you're with um, as a group I think it's it's pretty tight-knit at the moment and um, yeah so I think you got to sort of create your own atmosphere your own buzz you know at home you've you got thousands of home supporters and um, like I say you're in a very familiar environment. You come away and you realise it's just essentially a group of 36 players and, and staff and you've got travelling support as well but it's, it's kind of on you as a group to look after yourselves and to I guess yeah find that, that, that atmosphere in that environment. It'll be unbelievably special for me to see Ollie make his debut at the weekend. Having come through the academy with him, having seen how much progress he's made having seen sort of him have that expectation of having uh, a dad who was really successful and being able to make a success story in his own right is just amazing. You know, we, we're signed together as 18 year olds and alongside a few other people and it's just him and I left at Northampton now from that year group. Um, and so to hopefully share the pitch alongside him for his debut is gonna be really special for, for me um, personally. And, also, I just, just think it's going to be amazing for, for his family, who, I, um, who I've got to know over the years as well. Good morning, everyone. England back in all-black country for the first time in 10 years. It won't be worth it. Getting off the floor and going hard off the floor will be worth it because we've spoken about making this a special day. A special day for Finn, a special day for Ollie. Boys, but it's a special day for you as well and the person next to you. But it's not just for those people, it's for the people at home. Whether your family are in the stands, whether they're back home, whether they're not even here anymore, boys, it's gonna be worth it. So enjoy this bit, enjoy the hacker, live big, walk out big, be tall the whole way through it, okay boys? Ready to go. These are Thank special you, nights. Test matches under the lights in Kiwi Land. They feel different, they look different, they sound different. Amidst all of the unfamiliar, Steve Borthwick wants his team to play big, be smart and tough. 
whatever they encounter over the next two weeks. Mitchell's boot again. Ooh, there's plenty of pressure there from Slade and Manny Fairwebosu gets into the game. So a debut for Finn Baxter, the apprentice to Marner, if you like, at club level. And all week England would have been saying, we need to take our chances. And they come along, have to be ruthless. And Chandler Cunningham himself might be about to do that. Marotoje! Got it. Easy. Yeah, what a try. Powerful stuff from England. Rafetta always oh, slipped away from his man. It was beautifully done, and it surely created again in that corner. It has for Arnie Sobia. What a great shot from Cunningham South on Barrett. That was. What a shot. Yeah. What's happened here is that New Zealand's understandable willingness to play has given England, and thanks in large part to Ollie Lawrence there, a chance to go in at the interval, all square. How about that? Which he does, well, and Marcus Smith. And we have the game all level. Fellas, play big, yeah. we're hitting. Yeah. Fellas, it's all in the mind. Yeah. This is all in the mind, fellas. Let's make sure we do what we want to do. Yeah. Mitchell again, Smith is wide, and it's fair with both and England are in. Excellent patience from England there. So it was on his slight home. His colleague at Northampton, he's on for his debut. It is agony for England. One point in it. New Zealand have won it by 16 to 15. what I said out there, we've got one week. That one week, we need the effort of all 36 uh, players and all the staff. We've got one week to create a special memory. We've got one week to buy in, we've got one week, we've got one week. So with that, let's relish it. Let's, not make, let's make sure our heads are not down, let's stand up tall, chin up. Because we've got one week to get a result. We've got one week to get the result we want. So let's buy into that. Obviously not the result. We wanted for you, mate, but you always remember your first camp. Well earned today. Massive shift to go out there and do 60 because the geriatric here didn't fancy it anymore. Mm -hmm. You're a special player, mate. As a front rower as young as you, you're a special player and you've got loads of caps ahead of you. So I'm proud of you, mate. Well done. Um, I'm so so proud to have represented my country now, and to do it with you lads has been has been awesome. And uh, I can't say much more. But um, thank you. short time you've been a professional rugby player, you've developed so much uh, on and off the pitch, you're a seriously good man now, back then you were annoying as anything. Um, and uh, I know again, as, as mentioned by Joe, these aren't the circumstances you want to win your first cap in, but you've won your first cap and, and no one can ever take that away from you and there's going to be plenty more to come mate. You're an awesome bloke, awesome family man, uh, and it was really an honour to share the picture with you today mate, well done. Always been my dream is I think every boy that grows up in this country's dream to play this and all I can do is thank the staff and thank all you boys for, for making me welcome in this camp and giving me the opportunity to go out there. Thank you very much.